and, it, and it's interesting because the party has done actually a pretty good job, right? And this is what they do, right? They actually, if you look at what their response to COVID-19, it was very similar to the response to the poor air quality because they, the first thing they do is they externalize it. So they don't say that we are creating it. They just say that, okay, it exists. We admit that it exists. We discuss that it exists. We declare it a threat to the party, a threat, well, not to the party, but to the nation. And then we say we need a whole of, you know, whole of society approach to defeat the war. You know, so they declared war on smog. That, then they declared war on COVID. And that has actually turned out to be a very successful strategy for them for staying in power. Because instead of actually denying something that's going on, they admit that it's happening, but they, they, you know, kind of use sleight of hand to say that they're not the ones responsible for it. And then they, they attack it so hard. They stay so much on offense that they're actually able to get people over that initial hump of saying, well, okay, but this is happening because of you. Oh, doesn't matter. We're going to defeat this. We're going to, we are going to defeat the pollution. We're going to defeat the COVID. Doesn't, don't worry about those gain of function experiments. Don't you worry about that Wuhan lab. Sure. Jung Lee, she's in the fight. She's helping us. She's going to defeat this thing. It's, it's, it's actually kind of amazing to me to see how how successful they've been at it. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's been a shock for all of us too. But um, well, it's like you were talking about earlier. The, how for twenty years people have been expecting the economic collapse. They somehow just keep spinning it. Well, somehow I mean, we could stop pumping money into there. Let's not like, get crazy, <laughs> Shelley. There's there's still money to be made if we just triple our investments. Uh, yeah. But if we just triple down, then then it'll work, right? You know, it's like uh, it's like when you're in a bad relationship and you say, "Well, you know, we've, but we've been together for so long. If we just if we just stay together a little bit longer, I can change them. I can change them, right? As every bad relationship, that's the that's the the best refrain of every bad relationship. I can change them, right? They're broken, and I can help, right? This is anyone, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. That's always the refrain is that someone gets into this. It's, it's codependency, right? And you, ki- you can almost look at the United States, the West relationship with the CCP as a codependent relationship. We, see, we keep thinking that we can change them. We keep thinking that, we're, that they're going to change, that as long as we keep doing what they're doing, that someday they're going to change as if, as if overnight, you know, some difference is going to occur as long as we keep doing it. I say, no, I say, pull back. I say, hold off. You know, this is the point where you got to go into your phone and just delete, just straight up delete the contact info, go in and then go to your photos, delete every photo that you've had together and say, you know what? We're done. We're breaking up. We're out. So America needs to break up with China before we fall down the stairs. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying America's got to break up. We're done. We're done. They're not going to change. Any final thoughts before we wrap up, Jack? Yeah, I think that I do, at least in terms of public opinion, um, that's probably the biggest beacon of light that I've seen in terms of any of this is that, yeah, obviously, there's a massive economic corridor that is connecting the United States, at least the elites of the United States. You know, it, it, when you know, the Occupy movement used to talk about the 1%. And so if you calculate it, the 1% in China is kind of analogous to the CCP, right? The numbers actually work out, you know, if you go 1.4 to the members of the party, it's actually a little bit less than 1%. But it's it's analogous to the 1% in the US. So it's the 1% and the 1% that have merged. But everybody else, whether you're La Baixing in, in China, or whether you're just, you know, an American, you know, working class, middle class, you know, it's it's not helping you. And so the question is, at least on this side of the divide, at least in the West, I think a lot more people are starting to get that. And I I do think that you're going to start seeing a new generation of political leaders that are going to have to address this thing, because it's been one of the biggest conversation shifts that I've seen in uh, this entire space over the past 15 years that I've there that I've been here. Well, I think that's a nice, hopeful note to end on. Thanks again for joining us, Jack. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Keep up the great work. You know, I was thinking about what Jack was saying about how, you know, like the 1% of America and the 1% of China are coming together, sort of a 2%, if you will. Um, uh, It's a crazy idea, but hear me out. Hear me out. What if... Shelly, you seem nervous. No, no, no. I'm just thinking about how how you can't add percentages, but go ahead. I just did. It's not how math works, but please go. Hey, who says how math works? Okay, yes, okay. Uh, So, so hear me out, crazy idea. What if the people 
take all of the money from these, you know, rich oligarchs and we just divide it amongst the people. So what you're saying is kill the rich and take their stuff. Yeah, and I think I'll be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna it's, love it. You know, you know what I love is is like you say that as a joke, but it's actually kind of what Xi Jinping is saying he wants to do. Uh, well, he didn't say anything about killing people. Yeah, but he, but he did wants say you know the rich prosperity. just have to give up some of their stuff for the benefit of all. Right, that's kind of what Mao said too. Which is what rich people are definitely always willing to do, and they're not yeah. just trying to funnel their money out of China as fast as possible. Exactly. Yeah. We need. We should make an offer to Jack Ma. Hey, ditch China, become a rich American. Think about that. And then, once we've lured him here, we beat him up and take his stuff. Uh, the problem is trying to get his money out of China. Yeah, that is a, Dude, that is a trick. If, if you're worth a billion dollars and you can only get 50000 out a year. Well, we know that's not how they do it. But he just still. puts it all in NFTs. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yes, there you go. Yeah, I know, but it would still take like 20,000 years to get your money out. But anyway, it doesn't matter. What is math? What, I don't what know is what math? math is. You take a percent, divide it in half, and what do you get? Half a percent. Okay. <laughs> this is I'm the not kind. Of, I'm not arguing with that. This is the kind of math that uh, will create our communist utopia. Uh, End of the day, huh? Yeah, no, kind of tired, weird. everyone. Because you know, I came out with a great, great suggestion. You're just, you know, we're we're not uh, enthusiastic enough about the revolution. Yeah, I don't understand why not. I you know, I appreciate how hard it must have been for Marx. <laughs> he comes up with this idea and like you know, hey guys. Check this out. And just, you know, kind of crickets yeah. for a while. Well, decades went by before yeah. anything really happened with that. And there's the Paris Commune kind of Marxist. And then the Russian Revolution. Those were also decades apart. I mean, yeah, just it didn't go well for him. Someday the people of the future will realize my genius. Yeah. But those people are not me and Shelley. So what happens if you add 1% and 1%? Matt, can you explain? Thanks for watching China Unscripted. <laughs> I'm Chris Chappell. I'm Shelley Jong. And I'm Matt Kinesta. Talk to you next time.